Step one of graphing a double bar graph is to come up with a title. If you look over at your data sheet, you already have a title, Volume of Gas Produced in Milliliters Class Data. So I'm just going to write that at the top here. Okay, your next step is to find the scale for the y-axis. We need to know what numbers to put on this y-axis. In order to do that, you're going to look at your two papers, the averages that we have for the class, and also what you found during your own trials. When you look at all of these numbers, you will see that 26 is the highest number. When we come back to the graph, you count how many blocks there are on the y-axis. In this case, there are 25. Because that is so close to the 26, that is our highest number, I'm just going to number by ones and then just go off for that one point here. So if each one of these is going to be one, that doesn't mean I need to number every line. So instead what I'm going to do is number by fives on every fifth line. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. This prevents it from being too cluttered. The last thing that you want to do in this step is to make sure you label what these numbers mean. When we look over on our sheet, we see that at the top we have milliliters is what each of these numbers stands for. So we need to write what in milliliters? Volume of gas produced milliliters. milliliters just goes in the parentheses. The next step is to find what we're going to put across our x-axis. In order to do a double bar graph, you're going to have one color bar represent your data, which would be on this trial one on this page. The next bar that touches it and is right next to it is going to be the average of the class for trial one. Then we need a second bar, that is the color that you pick. Right next to it, the average of the class. Then we need the third bar, the average that is corresponding to it for the class. And then finally, you're gonna have a fourth bar and the average of the class that corresponds to it. So in all, we are going to have eight bars that we need to draw across this graph. And we wanna spread it out so that it looks nice. We here have 34 lines that go across. That means that if we take up about three bars for each of our results and the class results, that will spread it out pretty high. So what I'm gonna do here is just mark. The first three I'm gonna put here that I know that I want to have as mine. And I'm gonna use blue for my results. The next three I'm going to put for the class results. Then just to make it look nice, I'm going to skip two. And then I have three for my results, three for the class results, and then I'll skip two. Then I have three for my results, three for the class results, skip two, three for my results, and three for the class results and that takes up a pretty good amount of space there. Now, just to label underneath, we have trial one, trial two, trial three, and the average for each of our results. So, the first set of blue and red is going to be trial one. The next set will be trial two. The next set will be trial three. And then the last set will be average. For this, I'll just call it, last thing we wanna do is, own and class trials. Now it's time to color in the bars. Remember, blue is going to represent my trials, red is going to represent the class. So my trials are on the first worksheet. Trial one, I have 21, so I need to go up to the 21. Remember that I did three across. And I'm going to color that one in.
Now when we look at trial one of the class, their average was 13.19. So I go up to 13.19, which is a little above the 13. I go three across and I color that one in red to show that that is the classes. Do that for the rest of the trials. It is optional if you want to rate the numbers right at the top. So here I had 21, then we had 13.19, 26, and so on, so you have all the numbers easy to look at. That is just optional. Otherwise, this is how you do a double bar graph.